Hi, I'm Louise, conservator of paper here at the National Gallery of Victoria. In the lead up to the William Blake exhibition, we've been examining all of our William Blake watercolours from his Divine Comedy series. Our main focus has been on verifying media, but we're also interested in identifying light sensitive pigments as well as any actively degrading components. We've started by examining each work using transmitted light where the works are placed on a light table and the light passes through the sheet. Areas of the paper that are thinner appear more luminous. We're able to see features like the watermark, the countermark, chain lines, laid lines and any other idiosyncrasies of the sheet such as paper makers tears or localised areas of damage. So we know that Blake was given a blank book, a ledger style book by his patron John Linnell. The book itself was disbound at the end of the 19th century so that a selection of the watercolours, including some of our NGV works, could be displayed at the Royal Academy in London. We've also examined the works using raking light. And it was when we were examining some of the works, four in fact, that we noticed unusual creasing down one side of them that didn't appear to relate to handling or any other sort of mechanical damage. In fact, they seemed to be related to the previous binding of the works. Blake's first stage of building up the composition was to lay down underdrawing, or the initial marks, and he did this using either graphite type pencil or a black friable media that we've characterised as black chalk. And on this work we can see some of the notes that he'd written to himself with his ideas for the composition, but unfortunately he was never able to revisit this work. Here we're looking at Dante adoring Christ under normal light and when it's viewed under UV light we can see that the beautiful crimson pigment in the upper right corner appears bright pink. This is a characteristic fluorescence colour of a red lake pigment called Kermes which is made from ground scale insects and unfortunately it's an extremely light sensitive pigment. In his work Capanius the Blasphemer Blake's used various techniques to create the highlights in the lightning bolts so that they appear to be flashing. Under magnification, we can observe this technique sponging. Blake seems to have worked quite vigorously using some sort of a material such as bread or a sea sponge that he's dampened, and he's vigorously worked at the surface of the paper, peeling some of the surface fibres and abrading them. Another technique that he's used to create the highlight is called scratching out. And for this, he's used a tool like a pen knife, which he would have had at hand to be shaping his quill. And he's carved into the surface of the paper, gouging through the watercolour layers, right through to the pristine underlying paper layers. This is a 19th century watercolour box produced around the time Blake was working on the Divine Comedy series. Here in the Paper Conservation Studio, we collect historic pigments like these, particularly light-sensitive ones, so that we've got known examples to compare with unknown pigments in works in our collection. Although these kind of watercolours were available at the time Blake was working, he chose to continue to grind his own pigments, so he would use a chunk of gamboge, say like that, take off a piece and grind it down to powder form and then mix it with a gum or a glue, like these kind of powders that would, he would mix with water. I'll start with gamboge, which is the same as the one that Blake would have used. And they need to be rubbed quite vigorously on the porcelain, and this dish is designed especially for this, to tease off the pigment. And then using our 19th century brush, just lay one layer down, as Blake would have done, to mix pigments. And he'd allow that to dry for a few moments before adding the next colour. The final stage of his composition was to apply ink lines to the bordering line of the watercolour. The ink that he used was an India ink, it was commercially prepared and he applied it using a quill. He had definite ideas about outline, having said, leave out the line and you leave out life itself. Our time spent examining the William Blake watercolours from his Divine Comedy series has given us an insight into the materials that he's used, including the number of light-sensitive pigments in his palette. For this reason, the works can be rarely displayed. 
The William Blake Exhibition presents a rare chance to view these special works from our collection.